Good day everyone, my name is Lester Fajardo Badinas from BPED 2A. Our topic is Chapter 6, Visual Elements in Philippine Traditional Motifs and Crafts. The Philippine visual arts encompass a range of forms developed by Filipinos in ethnic, Spanish, American, and featured form of contemporary traditions. In ethnic communities, they have pottery, waving, carving, and metal crafts are made for ritual purposes or for everyday use. During the Spanish colonization, they introduced painting and sculpture whose subject matter was the most part of the religious, although secular themes and forms emerged in the 19th century while American period witnessed the conflict between conservatism and modernism, with the latter is gaining ground, but in the end is painting and sculpture. So after the World War II, artists explored variety of Western and Eastern styles, but subconsciously going back to the ethnic roots to express themselves, as an individual and as a Filipino. Learning outcomes. At the end of this chapter, the students will be able to analyze how line is interpreted and utilized in traditional crafts, develop students' ability in manipulating the elements of words, and document changes in shifting environment such as thin, texture, sound, fusion of various elements of art. Lesson 1, Introduction Since the day man began to give shape to the materials provided by nature for meeting his rudimentary requirements, he has never been able to resist the inward urge to adorn and beautify his possessions and surroundings. All these efforts have led to the creation of motifs from different origins, organizing theme in suitable layouts, this gives the uniqueness of the motifs used in any traditions. Decorative motifs and symbols classification. There are times when, when, we, when we do not understand what is being meant by a word, a thought, an act, or a thing. We need, to, uh, we need other things to describe them in order to properly understand their meanings. This is particularly true when we are dealing with works of art and in the literary world. This is why and motifs are created to understand. These motifs help us to depend on the ideology that we have in our mind. And they help us also to beautify the thing and be specific, specify the quality of our works. Motif. Motif is an image, spoken, or written word, sound, act, or other visual or structural device that has symbolic significance. It is used to develop and inform the theme of literary works. The concept of a motif is related to, to, to a theme, but unlike a theme, which is an idea or message. A motif is a detail that is repeated in a pattern or meaning that can produce a theme while creating other aspects of the same time. It is closely related to a theme or a symbol and uses different narrative elements. It is constantly repeated to represent a dominant or central idea or theme in a work of art. It relates more to thought which is used to support a theme. For example, the theme Sadibu is like a Cinderella. So we play the colors of the Cinderella, which is light blue and royal blue to the text and portray the theme of Cinderella. Also, we put chandeliers along staircase to showcase the totality of the theme. And we add some patterns or carving to make it more beautiful because of what because of what I've said in the report, it does represent the dominant or central idea to support the theme. Motifs typically are used in one of the three ways. 
First, a single object that appears multiple times throughout the work with most of the emphasis placed on the item. An example of a single object is chandelier. It appears multiple times during the event because it gives dominant and alluring to the visitors that makes them appreciate it. Second, a collection of related objects that appear multiple times to emphasize the theme. And my example of this collection object that related to the theme is the gown of the debutant that depicts the gown of Cinderella. It gives emphasis the motif or a theme of the event and gives attractive to the visitors. Third, a collection of seemingly unrelated items that serve to draw attention to the theme in a subtler manner. So on my idea, this is how I understand the topic. A collection that unrelated to the event but serve to draw attention to the visitors is what we call the contrast. Because if we portray the theme of a Cinderella, we put contrast colors to highlight the other colors and to add some beauty of the theme. Classification of motifs. First, geometric motif. These motifs include the lines in various forms such as vertical, horizontal, diagonal, and formed. They form fabric designs such as stripes, blades, checks, and circles, and their associated design. Um, or the other term is carving. More often, lumalabas na ang mga carvings woods today sa mga weddings and debut to add some alluring to the visitors para mas maganda tingnan ang, ang theme. Second, realistic or natural motif. Natural motifs portray as direct replica of things as they exist in nature, such as flowers or trees, animals in jungle, human figure, and other natural things. For example, um, the first birthday of Zion, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Richard and Sarah Gutierrez, the motif of their event is safari. So the motif is nature that has trees, flowers, and the animals in the jungle to represent the safari theme. And third, styled motif. Uh, these are simplified variation of natural or man-made objects that um, are no longer recognizable. This motif are full creativity as they are the result of a designer's interpretation of naturally existing things. Um, so this motif is a simplification of the designer's interpretation of the theme. Uh, so, if the theme is Cinderella, di lahat pwede i-copy o ilagay doon kung ano talaga. Kasi depende yon sa, sa, sa customer. But as long as the theme ng Cinderella is makikita pa rin doon. It depends on, how, on, on the designer on how they portray it to make it attractive to the visitors kasi they add their own styles of designs. Kasi parang pinaghalo na, binaghalo na siya ng, ng uh, theme at saka own designs ng designers. Uh, fourth, abstract motif. These are combinations of color, size, and shape without relationship to natural or man-made objects. They are full of color and interest to the fabric. Abstract implies an element of impression and a greater freedom that is found in geometric designs. This type of design is used in modern art. So, the example for this is the boho style of theme. So more on, as of now, uh, as of today's, maraming gumagawa ng boho style na nadib na, na dibo theme. So, because um, it represents the different colors and shapes with the idea and styles of the designers. And this is the modern style sa mga event na ngayon. Symbol. Symbol comes from the Greek word symbolon, which means contract, token, insignia, and means of identification according to Encyclopedia Britannica 1997. 
Symbols facilitate communication by giving a common reference point for a variety of original desperate ideas. Also, symbols depicted on objects allow us to decode some of the meanings behind them and understand better the cultures that made and used them. Symbols are universal in the sense they transcend history. So a symbol is an object or a picture, a written word, or a sound that is used to represent something else either by a resemblance, convention, or association. Every language has symbols. In fact, our names are symbols that represent us as individuals. Um, for example, um, Spanish army, Spanish, uh, the symbols of Spanish army is uh, the eagle, the, eagle uh, the golden eagle na merong sword sa gitna and may crown. And also, um, another example of symbols is the Republic of the Philippines. Di ba? May logo tayo. So, may simbolo doon. Like yung... yung Yung eagle represent from American eagle and the lion uh, represents Spanish lion and the uh, three stars represent sa different part of the Philippines which is the Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Um, so that is the symbolo, parang symbols ng Philippine flag and also our names, di ba? Since sinabi dun sa report, also our names is the symbols of uh, is the symbol of our individuality. Types of symbols. First, iconograms. There are iconic signs which, as an illustrative representation, that emphasize the points in common between the signifier and signified. So these types of symbol is emphasizing the between signifier and signified. An example is church. Church is a signifier that portrays the image and construction of the church while the signified is the main concept of the church which is giving the Catholic a platform to give respect and have faith to our Almighty God. Second, pictograms. Pictograms are pictorial representation. Pictograms are iconic signs which represent complex facts, not through words or sounds, but through visual carriers of meaning. Example of pictogram is a signage of no smoking. It represents the facts that through words or action, but in a signage or visual carriers, and makikita ito sa mga establishments. For example, sa airport, makikita mo yung signage doon na no smoking kasi bawal yon. Then, third, cartograms. Cartograms are topographical representation with com complex function like statistics, etc. are iconic facts, for example, an atlas or the ground plan of a house. So a cartogram is also called an amorphic map that features the geographic size of the country or the province. Fourth, diagrams. Diagrams are functional representations. They are visual signs which are partly iconic representations but are more functional carriers that illustrate. For example, a sequence of facts or functions. Another example for this is a pie chart. It draw and shows arrangements and relation of the subject and it made for mathematical or scientific purposes. Fifth, ideograms. Ideograms represent a concept. Typically, ideograms correspond to the sign as a symbol which relates to the object or concept referred to independently of any format identification with it. Um, example of ideogram is the signage of a comfort room. As we can see, the public restroom is meron signage na boy and a girl to represent the idea of sexuality. Diba? So nakikita natin yun. Uh, specifically sa mga mall. Diba? Nakikita natin yung, yung logo ng, ng boy at saka girl. Okay. Six is logograms. 
Logograms are conceptual representation like writing. They are visual, referential linguistic signs that do not take the pho phonetic dimension in into consideration. Logogram, also known as logograph, is um, yung yung mga nakikita natin sa mga keyboards natin sa laptop or, or sa phone. So, yun yung mga logograms natin. Like for example, yung 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 dollar signs, yung euro, euro signs, yung yung equivalent signs, yung ganun. Seven, typograms. Typograms are typographical representations. A typogram is a sign that is also composed of a sign derived from the from a written repertoire such as alphabet. As you can see, the picture, yeah, the picture, yun yung example sa typograms. It shapes like an ice cream, but the letter is created in a letter of or words. So yung ice cream, yung ice cream yung parang nakarita yung words niya. So eight, phonograms. Phonograms are phonet, uh, phonetic representation. A phonogram is a sign that is used to signify linguistic or other sounds. For example, ship. It has three sounds, the sh, the e, and the p, but pronounced as a one word. So, ship, ship. Indigenous Philippine arts and crafts. One of the most precious traditional livelihoods that are still kept until today is waving that originated in the pre-colonial times. The art of waving of the Cordillera tribal groups in the Philippine North is still existing despite the threat of the more practical mass productions of clothes. Pinia cloth is also produced in loom throughout the province of Antique. It is a delicate and exquisite hand-woven cloth that is made from the fibers obtained from the leaves of pineapple plants. It is popularly used in Barong Tagalog, the country's traditional formal menswear. Abaca fiber derived from the abaca plants is widely grown in certain regions in the country. It is woven mainly to make cinnamon fabric and abaca rope, as well as specialty papers like vacuum bags, currency, and tea bags. There are also handcrafts like bags, carpets, and clothing made by abaca. Filipino potters make pots of different sizes, shapes, and designs, which are usually geometric with stylized nature theme motifs. Functional pieces are made as the need would arise. For example, Palayok, banga, and tapayan, kalan, or clay stove. Philippine sculpture is the most familiar art form among Filipinos. The most popular wood, wood carvings are those of the Anitos or nature gods, santos or faints, and statues of Christ and the Blessed Mother. Since the early 16th century, jewelry making in the country has been practiced in the country. It is believed that the skills of the early Filipino jewelry makers are adopted from their Asian neighbors like the Chinese or the from like the Chinese from the China. So our re-elected and three-term senator, now Deputy Speaker, Lauren Ligarda, has always believed in the potential of our culture and our rituals and our textile industry and how certain practices, when given ample support, can transform the livelihood of these communities. As three-term senator, Ligarda authored Republic Act Number no. 9242 or the Philippine Tropical Fabrics Law, which promotes the country's natural fabrics through the use of such materials for official uniforms of government officials 
and employees. Ligarda's vision is to have a permanent textile gallery in the country to uplift the culture and arts here in the Philippines. And with help of our Department of Tourism and Department of Trade Industry, we paved with good quality of our product because our culture is, the, is very diverse and our artists is very talented. And this product, like abaca fiber, basket, powders, palayok, um, banga, sculptures, and jewelry, is very known here in our country. And not also here in our country, but around the world. Actually, we have different pasalubong center. Diba? Kapag nakikita nyo, we have different pasalubong center. Every municipality has pasalubong center because of our re-elected Senator Lauren Ligarda. She put that center to to give um, to give information to the tourists that we have a lot to offer. We have a lot of arts crafts here in the Philippines. So, nakikita natin doon, we have a lot of delicacies, like parong tag-alog, baskets na makikita sa mga pasalubong center. But also, we paid for the waivers na gumagawa ng mga ganyan. Kasi, hindi nila nawawala yung kultura natin as a waivers. Sila talaga yung gumagawa yan, naghihirap. Kasi, yun yung promotion ni Lauren Ligarda. Na hindi mawala yung kung ano ang kulturang meron tayo and we are happy na during the Miss Universe 2018 um, Katriona Gray um, used um, used or wear uh, Filipino designs and used a Filipino textiles which is the um, the pinya clothes or the uh, mga gawa ng mga ng mga waivers from South Cotabato, di ba? Na ipakita ni Katriona kung ano ang kultura natin, di ba? So, and, we and, and as a Filipino, we are very happy and amazed by Katriona kasi hindi lang niya, hindi lang siya nanalo during the Miss Universe 2018 but na ipakita niya pa kung ano ang kulturang meron tayo. So, I think that's for my report. Thank you.